Hello, friends. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've been here to read. Uh, you can tell by the circles under my eyes that I'm quite tired and overworked, but uh, I haven't forgotten about you. I haven't forgotten about this reading, and I'm trying to. Oh, there's a cat here making some noise, but I'm trying to sort of give myself some grace for not getting all the things done every day, and I hope you are too. Um, but I'm here with Patricia Lockwood to continue reading. We're still in the portal and have a little bit um, left in the portal to go. And in case you're curious how far along in this book we are, we're approaching the halfway point, not quite there. But so I'll just go ahead. There is still a real life to be lived. There are still real things to be done, she thought one night, helping a friend wash a fine splatter of possum blood off her hands, face, hair. There is still the cut and dried, the black and white. But when they walked into the backyard the next morning with a long handled shovel they had bought specifically for the purpose of disposing of the concrete evidence of the deep, the wild, the red blood jet, the possum had disappeared, not dead at all. Sometimes she wanted to watch an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that didn't exist. It was all there in her mind, the underground parking garage, the sweep of a trench coat and dark sunglasses, some sort of VHS tape or gleaming chip that had fallen into the wrong hands. The desire to watch this movie occasionally overwhelmed her when the year wound down and the clocks fell back. In the past, this would have been classed as existential longing and the French book would have been written about it and it would have eventually been made into an out of the box blockbuster starring none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger. And just when the weather turned, you would settle down to watch it with a big bowl of snack that was not quite what you were hungry for either. The portal's favorite stories now were about interracial friends who met playing online Scrabble and eventually invited each other to Thanksgiving dinner. One of them must be very old, old enough to have been on the wrong side of the civil rights movement, and one of them must be very young, young enough that their face was like a fresh light bulb. They must encounter each other's traditional dishes with an equal amount of surprise and familiarity. They must take pictures of themselves sitting down at the feather flocked table, and most importantly, they must do it again next year. We reveled in these stories, which were not untrue, but there was some untruth in the degree to which they comforted us. <laughs> My cat is not amused. Was it better to resist the new language where it stole, defanged, co-opted, consumed, or was it better to text Thanksgiving titties be poppin' to all your friends on the fourth Thursday of November, just as the humble bird of reason, which could never have represented us on our silver dollars, made its final unwilling sacrifice to our willingness to eat and be eaten by each other? Why did rich people believe they worked harder? Her theory was that it was because they identified with the pile of money itself and gathering interest, multiplying hotly, climbing its own slopes like a fever, heightening its silver, its gold, its green. What was that but work? When you thought about it that way, they never slept, but stayed wide-eyed as numerals, 365 days a year, every last digit of them busy, awake in the clinking, the shuffle, the rustle, while eagles with pure platinum feathers swooped above them to create a wind. When you thought about it that way, of course they deserved it all and looked with rightful contempt at the coppery disgraces all around them, those two scents that refused to even rub themselves together. The mind we were in was obsessive, perseverant. It swam with superstition and half-remembered facts pertaining to how many spiders we ate a year and the rate at which dentists killed themselves. One hemisphere had never been to college. The other hemisphere had attended one of those institutions that is only ever referred to as a bubble though not beautiful. At times it disintegrated into lists of diseases, but worth remembering, the mind had been in its childhood, a place of play. It had also once been the place where you sounded like yourself. Gradually it had become the place where we sounded like each other through some erosion of wind or water on a self not nearly as firm as stone. Everyone was reading the same short story. It was about texting, hearts for eyes, bad kisses with their terrible bristles, porn moving in vague blobs through the body, how social protocol constitutes another arm of perception, and how men sucked, of course. Two ghosts in an emptiness, moaning self-consciously, suddenly finding themselves in possession of a whole bedroom's worth of pins and needles. What did ghosts do on the one night a year that they were given bodies? Wasted them in trying to reach through each other as they could do when they were vapor, air, the same breath that everyone was breathing together as they turned the final page. Whew. In the portal, their breath turned to wreaths of frost and everyone gathered together to watch the incest commercial. 
A sexy brother on a surprise visit home for the holidays greets his sexy sister in the kitchen before anyone else is awake. A conspiracy of the body thrills between them. The sister sticks a bow on her brother's chest and declares him her present. Long ago, some unwitting subtext in the faces of the actors suggests these two discovered 69 in an attic. They consume a mug of hot black folders and wonder if they have enough time. But no, here comes the step of the sexy parents on the stairs. Incest commercial, oh, incest commercial. The human family cupped their hands around the steam of it till they were warm. As soon as the brother rang the bell in the portal, they all understood it was time to go home. So she stepped from her own formlessness into the squares of her mother's advent calendar, where there were soft white blankets on the ground and little, little mice leading manageable lives, sleeping in empty matchboxes. And each morning, expectant opened the envelope of another day. The words Merry Christmas were now hurled like a challenge. They no longer meant newborn kings or the dangling silver notes of a sleigh ride or high childish hopes for snow. They meant, do you accept Herr Santa as the all-powerful leader of the new white ethnostate? The dread of standing at the top of her grandmother's stairs on Christmas Eve, hearing the phrase gold standard and knowing she was going to descend straight into the hell of an uncle's conversation about Bitcoin. So she lingered a moment in the scent of old lace and potpourri and mildewed towels, looking at childhood pictures of herself. The happy face like butter spread on brown bread, which suspected no such future, suspected nothing beyond fat clankings in a piggy bank, more Christmases, and eventually having enough. In the white elephant gift exchange, the most sought after gift was a rusted bug out box. You could do anything with it, exclaimed the Bitcoin uncle, the one who eventually nabbed it. Store your ammo in there, bury it for years. Hoarding ammo must be just like hoarding wealth, she thought, and saw again the heap in the vault, the free spreading wings of the money eagle. If your body was a pile of ammo, how could it ever be brought down? If it was already buried, how could it die? No, no, her sister protested, faced with a bite of rare Christmas venison. The brother had shot the deer himself, a mistake as it turned out on closer inspection to be a mother with only three legs. No, please don't, I'm pregnant. A fizzing black void opened behind her eyes where the long backward root of her sight was and she gathered her sister's rough blonde hair in her hands. There was still a real life to be lived. There were still real things to be done. Above all, there was still good news to be heard over a forkful of three-legged deer. Mama Mia, she said to her sister's stomach and offered it a tiny chef's kiss. She hoped as an afterthought and despite all her debasements that English would still be intact when it came time for the baby to learn it. The fizzing black void that she saw, was it anything like the portal? Possibly. Both were dimensions where, the, where only one thing happened. You revised your understanding of reality, all the while floating in a sea of your own tears and piss. I know what you're going through, she said silently to the baby, but sometimes you'll be scrolling along and NASA will post a picture of the stars. My bud's wife is pregnant too, her brother said, sipping a gold inch of scotch with an air of meditation his face covered with the requisite rusty pubes of his time. A bad guy has terrible internet poisoning. And the other day he says to me, saw my daughter's tits on the ultrasound, looked pretty good. And I was like, damn, dude, really? And he just gazed far off into the distance and said, I don't know how to act. I've been this way so long. I don't know how to be anymore. The difference between her and her sister could be attributed to the fact that she came of age in the 90s during the heyday of plaid and heroin, while her sister came of age in the 2000s during the heyday of thongs and cocaine. That was when everything got a little chihuahua and started starring in its own show. That was when we saw the whole world's waxed pussy getting out of a car and said more. Remember this, her sister said, and held up a screenshot of the opening of Paris Hilton's sex tape, which had been dedicated to the memory of 9-11. Ah, ha, 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 they all laughed together, the new and funnier way. The difference between her and her brother, though, could be attributed to the fact that he had gone to the war and stayed there for a very long time. Now, whenever she stayed in the same house as him, she had to carefully scrub out the tub every time he used it so as not to contract the flesh-eating foot fungus he had brought back home with him, along with so much else she would never know, so that when he said the word murked, it sounded so much heavier than when her friends in the portal said it or America, or freedom, or all up in them guts. But he promised, he had promised, that when it all went to hell, he would carry both sisters into the woods over his shoulders with him and his ragtag band of brothers who could track the skin and gut and build real fire. 
We'll go up near the Great Lakes where they'll still have water and you won't have to work and you can just look for nice rocks and function in a sort of, sort of shaman capacity, he had told her. She felt ready. Had she not recently cleaned possum blood off a woman's face while only screaming very slightly? She picked up her knife and fork and took another wild bite of her destiny. What a cute little pair of panties, her mother said as she emerged from the laundry room, holding up a pair of her brother's military silkies, which were the bright, which were the bright trumpeting yellow of the don't tread on me flag and embroidered with the words no step on snick. Late at night, they gathered around the mandatory Marble Island to watch Sasquatch vids on her sister's laptop, perhaps dreaming of their future in the woods together. In a landscape as still and crumpled as camouflage, there was a sudden glitch, a pixelation in the leaves. A piece of the forest rose from a crouch, seeming to glance over his great grizzled secret keeping shoulder. It was the Sasquatch, and as always at this point, the cameraman absolutely lost his shit. He never held steady, he never crept closer, he never zoomed in. When what he had been looking for his whole life revealed itself, he flung the camera away from him as if it were on fire and as far as it would go. Did you see the Sasquatch, honey? Her sister asked, rubbing her still flat belly. And all of them saw it then, that invisible flash between human trees. When they ran out of credible Sasquatch sightings, they turned to the greatest reality show of all time, Naked and Afraid. A man and a woman were dropped naked into the middle of the wilderness, and immediately two things happened. The woman started weaving palm fronds, and the man began to go insane from lack of meat. This generally led to him eating some kind of dubious trout and having diarrhea in what the woman considered to be their front yard. The whole thing would make a spectacular gender reveal party, come to think of it. The mom and dad could appear stripped and mud smeared before their guests in luscious suburbia, and if the baby was a girl, palm fronds. If it was a boy, the dad could shit himself and weep. A miracle that new people just kept coming into the machine like pinballs, and we were the ones playing it. It was the nimbleness in our fingers that kept them going and the red score running higher. Her sister, five years younger, had broken her arm one afternoon while she was supposed to be babysitting. She stepped out of the room for a moment and there was a scream like a black rip in the air. The fracture, shining with readiness, had come leaping out of the skin with a white chink. Now a new body was knitting in the body that had broken on her watch and it would trust her too. It had to. They would carry it on their backs into the woods. What is it like to have a child right now? She asked her brother after everyone else had gone to sleep as the fake flames crackled at their feet. And what was it about them that made them fake? She wondered for the hundredth time. Oh, it's great, he told her. Everything's on fire, so you no longer have to worry about doing a good job. His two-year-old son, when asked whether he was a boy or a girl, invariably answered that he was a gun. Life didn't flash before your eyes, she thought, as they lost control of their little toy car and went fishtailing over black ice driving south through Kentucky, barely missing a timber truck that had slid to a gentle backslash on the highway. Maybe she didn't have enough life to flash, she considered as her husband cried out, I love you, I'm sorry, and flung his arm like a seatbelt across her chest. All that happened was that she stumbled out of the car at the next exit, leaned over heaving with her hands on her knees, her rib cage trembling inside her like a cracked bone butterfly and began to laugh in a high, girlish, uncontrolled voice, as if in the course of endless scrolling, she had just seen the funniest fucking thing. The story of the country could be told in billboards alone, she noted as they drove on, still bursting into reasonless giggles from time to time, the words, I'm sorry, I love you, I love you, I'm sorry, still echoing in her left ear. Someone wrote them, but that is not what provided their meaning. Shoot real machine guns, machine gun America. If you're considering abortion, don't. Actors, singers, and talent for Christ. Her closeness to home is what did it and how she would start involuntarily weeping when she saw get your body back special offer for military. Why did you go? She had asked her brother once and he had answered with a certain simplicity. It was my turn. And she remembered that dusty afternoon at the Fontaine de Vaucluse how she had watched as a teenager crowned with a heap of dark curls ignored the danger signs and began walking down alone to the still pool of the source. Old rock sides slid again under his shoes for he was one of the ones who would make things happen. His voice would trigger avalanches, spring rainfall would pour his power and will, black birds would disappear into the sheer tall wall of him. His father begged him in a roaring gorgeous romance language, come back little idiot, my spitten image, the son did not listen. He walked down to the source. It breathed its cool word to him. Your turn, come. 
that's the end of that section. And it's a really interesting one. It's sort of, um, we have all the, the commentary about the absurdity of the portal, but it, it's definitely tipping towards, you know, real relations and, and real feelings with this line, you know, real life still happens. So we'll see what happens next, but thanks for tuning in and stay well. <laughs>